As you can see, these are thoracic vertebra on top of each other. So when they are placed that way, and this applies to all of your vertebra, you have holes in between the vertebra. Okay? This hole is called the intervertebral foramen. And this is the region where spinal nerves will exit and enter the spinal cord. The intervertebral foramen is formed by this notch right here that we call the inferior vertebral notch, as well as the notch on the lower vertebra that is called the superior vertebral notch. So when you place those vertebra on top of each other, you have the intervertebral foramen formed from the inferior vertebral notch of the top vertebra and the superior vertebral notch of the lower vertebra. Now to differentiate between this thoracic vertebra and a lumbar vertebra, all you have to do is look at the superior articular processes. Notice how, uh, excuse me, the facets. Notice how the superior articular facets of the thoracic vertebra point posteriorly towards the spinous process. When you compare that to the lumbar vertebra, you're going to find that the superior articular facets, not only do they point posteriorly towards the spinous process, but they also point medially towards each other. This is a differentiating factor between a thoracic vertebra and a lumbar vertebra. Other structures of the lumbar vertebra are pretty similar to the thoracic. So we have the body, vertebral foramen, transverse processes, spinous process, superior articular facets, superior articular processes on the back, and on the inferior side, we have inferior articular facet, and the backside is inferior articular process. Keep in mind that the lumbar vertebra do not have costal facets or costal surfaces because they do not interact with the ribs. It's only T1 through T5, uh, excuse me, T1 through T12, so the 12 thoracic vertebra that interact with your ribs.